Welcome everyone to Transfer Weekly episode three. We have plenty more news to cover in the feeder series world in transfers. I'm your host Chris McCarthy and joining me this week once again we welcome back Tyler Foster who is our Formula 2 expert and we welcome a new guest as well to the show F4 UAE editor for F1 feeder series George Brabner. Guys welcome to the show it's great to have you with us it's been a another big week for transfers. Uh, I think we should start with uh, news not with drivers but with a team. Tyler, I want to come to you first because we had a new team introduced that's going to race in both Formula 2 and FIA Formula 3 next season in PHM Racing by Chiruz. What do you make uh, about this one? Well, you did say about the fact that we've had a few teams recently sort of one or two seasons in, in F2, for example, HWA Race Lab were another German team who were only around for a year or two. They struggled, you know, a big organisation like themselves. This German team, PHM Racing, for those who don't know about them, they literally only were about for last year. Uh, you know, they were formed at the end of 2021. And they competed in, in three Formula 4 championships in the Winter Series in, in F4 um, UAE and then in the German and Italian Formula 4 championships where with the guys like Taylor Barnard, Nikita Bedrin, they actually were able to compete uh, with the likes of Prima, which, you know, in your first season is a massive achievement. And they have lofty goals set and you don't join F2 and F3 after one season of existing if you don't mean to to get about it. And they've done just that, as you mentioned. They've taken over the assets and the entries of, of Chiru's Racing. And as a result, they'll be um, working alongside them uh, for 2023 uh, as a, a sort of joint team uh, known as PHM Racing by Chiru's. And then for 2024, PHM will be taking over every single um, facet of, of that team and making sure that they integrate parts of the Chiru's team into them in the next 12 months. But yeah, it's a big announcement considering that they had such success last year in F4. Uh, and, you know, to go into both F2 and F3 is a big step for them. So hopefully they can have a good start next year. It seems like quite a good plan, actually, strategically, to to do a season looking over together. PHM Racing by Chiruz did not waste any time. They have announced their F2 drivers already this week. Let's start by the first one, Roy Nassani. They have announced him uh, to their program. It will be his fifth full season uh, racing in Formula 2. It's going to be the fourth different team uh, he has raced with. Uh, he is, of course, a test driver as well for Williams in Formula 1. Uh, let's come to you, Ty. Tyler, what do you make of this for Roy Nassani? Do you think uh, this is a good move for him? Well, people might forget that he's still a test driver for Williams, I guess, because he's been about for so long that you know he's one of those faces that people might just forget. But he is going to be back again for another season. He'll be switching from dams that he's been racing with um, in the last uh, two seasons. This will be his fifth season next year, having started with Campos, moved to Trident, and then, as I mentioned, with, with dams the last couple of years. He, he had a bit of a better season this year in terms of points, but we have to obviously take into account that um, there have been a couple of extra rounds in, in terms of the championship. He had a great opportunity to, to score his first uh, race, uh, feature race win earlier this season in Imola. And uh, I spoke to him before uh, Yas Marina and he, he famously, if, if people will remember, he dipped his car into, into the gravel and put it into the wall from a very, very winning, you know, dominant position. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So he's a driver that clearly has progressed, maybe not as much as, as obviously people would hope for somebody who's been in the series for, for four years now and, and entering his fifth. And he is 28. So, but um, I spoke to Bruno Michel, the F2 and F3 CEO, uh, earlier in the week and spoke to him about older drivers remaining in in, in the sport, drivers like Boshong and, and Nissani being, I think, a key example of that. And he said that, you know, it adds diversity to the grid in terms of that different base of experience. And, it, and it, I think... It, he also said that it's their championship as well as the young guys. So I think in that aspect, while some fans might not be happy that he returns, um, I think that it's clear that from the top down, um, he's very welcome there. So, yeah, he'll be a key asset for a, obviously a very inexperienced team uh, going forward. So whether he'll be in there for one season or two seasons, we'll see. But at the end of the day, I think he'll be a, a big player in terms of the PHM Racing's F2 season next year. The next signing they made is going to be a new driver to the Formula 2 grid. He makes the step up, having raced with Carlin in F3 this season. And that is the American 
Brad Benavides. He doesn't have a huge amount of experience still uh, in single-seater racing. Uh, so this could be a bit of a big step up for Brad Benavides, but a very exciting opportunity for the American driver. Uh, Tyler, he's going to have a lot of experience alongside him in Roy Nassani, as you mentioned there. So uh, a good teammate, I guess, to have alongside him uh, for that experience. Well, they have that experience and then maybe a bit of raw talent, raw speed partnership, which we sometimes do see in, in F2. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. With with the Cherus package that um, they have, obviously PHM will have for, for next year, um, they had a very, very strong season this year or this year with Enzo Fittipaldi having such an uh, impressive performance throughout the, throughout the entire campaign. And if they can keep that up for next year, then there's a chance that we could see the likes of Benavides make progress. As you said, he hasn't got that much experience in the F3 campaign that he had with Carl in this season. He only scored three points and that all came in, in one sprint race. So mm. you, know, you could argue that there are better drivers out there who haven't got the opportunity that Benavidez will have. But nevertheless, you know, he, he's just making that step up. He, he was a rookie this year in F3. He'll be a rookie next year in F2. You know, he's 21 years old. He's got he's got that youth. So, mm. yeah, it'll be interesting to see how uh, they partner up. We saw that Nassani in the testing was quite quick. So maybe PHM are a team to look out for. We never know. Van Amersfoort were a new team this year and they surprised a lot of people. So I would say just because the driver lineup might not be all, you know, glitz and glamour, you know, don't let that fool you. This is a team that are here for, for the long term. Yeah, I think 27 single-seater races he's done since moving up in 2018. He still does gearbox karting as well. But as you said, he had that eighth place at Spa. So does have the, the talent to compete for points. Uh, let's see how PHM Racing by Chirouz get on in their first season. OK, we're going to move from Formula 2 to Formula 3 next. Uh, and another team that completed their driver lineup this week was Trident. They started by signing... Oliver Gertha, a very exciting signing for them. He is, of course, the reigning Euro Formula Open champion. He did compete in two rounds of the FIA Formula 3 championship this year at Hungary at Spa, starting his very first race on pole position in the wet, having never driven uh, the car in the wet before and took an eighth place and a fourth place uh, at Spa as well. Uh, George, we haven't forgotten about you. We're going to come to you now. Uh, Oliver Gertha, uh, after those performances in F3 uh, this year, uh, this is a really exciting signing for Trident, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Um, Gertha had you know such an impressive uh, year in 2022. Of course, as you mentioned, um, Euro Formula Open champion. Um, definitely the you know the class of the field, and of course also those very very impressive uh, outings in FAA Formula Three. Um, made those with Campos, uh, of course. You know instead making the switch to Trident, um, which. A team that had a really uh, impressive 2022, um, a really strong trio in Maloney, Stanek, and Edgar. So yeah, they're a, they're a team which I think really proved themselves, and I think will be a really good home for Gertha going forwards. Um, he did make the move to Freca in 2021, um, but I would say had a relatively disappointing year uh, with MP. I think it was around 2020 or so um, in that championship. But yeah, the the campaign, the campaign he's had in 2022, I think, really fired him back up again. And that boost of confidence is something that I really hope carries through. Um, of course, the, you know, the um, asking that he did have with Campos, I think he, he really showed his worth. And, you know, with um, Trident behind him, I, I think it'll be a, a, one, a good uh, good driver to watch. Well, George mentioned Frecker there and completing the lineup for Trident is one of the drivers that race for them in Frecker this season. It is the rookie champion, Leonardo Fornaroli. He got the name tag, Mr. Consistency, throughout the season. He may not have taken a rookie win uh, throughout the season, but he finished eighth overall in the championship and took 15 uh, out of 20 top 10 uh, finishes. Uh, again, uh, George, this is a, a really exciting signing, isn't it, for Trident? He stays within the outfit as well, so already has a close relationship with the team. And he's proven by what he's done in Frecker that he can learn a car very, very quickly. Yeah, unlike Gertha, I guess, who's um, jumped ship. For he's got that advantage, right? That he's um, already comfortable where he is. And yeah, as you say, a, a really um, a really strong year in Frecker this year. Of course, snatching the um, rookie title from Dufek right in the last race, actually, at Mugello. So yeah, with um, with Gertha and Gabriel Bortoletto, who finishes that Trident lineup, um, I think that's... A, you know, a trio that's going to be great to watch and great to see how they get on. Um, yeah, miss, miss the consistency, as you say. And I think in Formula 3, where composure is 
it, you know, it stands for a lot in that series. Um, I think that would be a characteristic that should really carry him to um, the front. And uh, I'm sure we'll see him regularly fighting the top 10. Well, we're going to stick to the theme of lineups being competed. We're going to go from F3 back to uh, Formula 2 now and to Virtuosi Racing. They have completed their driver lineup. Let's start by the first driver they signed, and that is Jack Doohan. Very exciting signing for them. Uh, he stays with the team for his second full season uh, in Formula 2. He finished sixth uh, last season. Before that, he was an FIA Formula 3 vice champion. And we did see him out in a Formula 1 car this year uh, in some FP1 sessions. Tyler, uh, this is a really good signing for Jack Doohan to keep him within the team uh, and definitely someone who can go and fight for the title next year. Well, I'm sure there's some sour Aussies who wish that he was in F1 for next year. And I think <laughs> yeah. he's been lucky, you could argue, if you look at Sargent's season, Doohan's hasn't been too far off. You could argue that Doohan probably has maybe raw uh, speed over, over Sargent in that sense. But um, I think that in terms of staying on for another season, you know, as you mentioned, staying with the same team, again, is obviously always an advantage. Um, he's also, you know, we'll come to it, got a better teammate. This year he was with Marino mm. Sarto, who, with all respect, has certainly not been able to make much progress in terms of his F2 career. Um, and I think speaking to Doohan over the course of the season, that was having a massive effect on him and that was hampering him. And, and me and Josh Revel talked about it in the, in the F2 review where we discussed about how Doohan's season was pretty good, despite the fact that, you know, he had made quite big mistakes throughout it. But he's learned big lessons. You know, he's got that feature race win at the back end of Spa. He finished sixth in the championship, um, you know, got pole th three times. And you know, that's the most other than Felipe Drogovic. So it shows that even though he was a rookie this year, he was still already one of the contenders. Um, my opinion, I think he'll be the favourite next year. He's someone that I'd put money on to win the title next year. I think he's just going to be straight out from the gate. And um, and yeah, I think when it comes to his career as well, you've got to remember that now that Alpine have got Ocon on Ga and Gasly for you know two years at least. Other, you know, other than, otherwise there might be some sort of mix up in that in that match. But in terms of doing actually trying to get into the, into F one, finding that gap uh, for that route to make it into Alpine. You know, he's got to really stand out. Otherwise, you know, he might have a Piastri situation where, you know, it, it's it's not as easy as it looks. So I think the doing might find himself in a bit of a tricky situation in terms of that. But otherwise, for next year, his focus will be purely, obviously, on, on F2 and trying to win that title to make sure that he does get the best opportunity he can. Well, you mentioned that better teammate. Let's come on to him now. Uh, that is going to be... Amory Cordill. He makes the switch from Van Amersfoort to Virtuosi uh, for next season and he had a fantastic end to the season. Was in the points uh, in four of the last five races. Uh, particularly at the last round, he was very, very strong. It's going to be his second full season uh, racing in Formula 2. So, uh, Tyler, what, what do you make of this? I mean, we did see Amory win the Spanish F4 Championship a few years ago. Do you think that, uh, do you think that form is starting to come back now? Well, I don't want to get on the bad side, but, you know, he, he has in the week been in the news for receiving a driving ban. But at the end of the day, right. he has actually made progression in terms of motorsport. There's a lot of people who don't rate him at all. Um, I'm someone who actually thinks that he has a lot more talent maybe than people will give him credit for. In terms of the end of the season, as you mentioned, he did pick it up. Uh, and even towards the middle part of the season, we could see him qualifying you know, towards sort of eight, nine, tenth in the grid, which, you know, if you're making that progress halfway through the season, you know, as a rookie... There's nothing wrong with that, and and you know he was with a new team, Van Amersfoort, in terms of um, yeah. in terms of two. So that's something to bear in mind as well. Yes, that was a, a fairly quick team who you know were trotting out quite a quick car, as we saw with the likes of Jake, uh, Jake Hughes and David Beckman. But I think the fact that Cordell was actually able to make that progress says that he is able to improve even further. He's joining a team in Virtuosi who historically have been one of the front runners in F2 recently. So there's no reason why he can't um, make even more progress and 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 give doing maybe something. Uh, as well to 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 leech off of and, and and progress himself. So I think that when it comes to Cordell, he is 20 years old, so he's actually a year older than than doing, which people might not recognise. But despite that, I think that Virtuosi uh, certainly have got themselves an interesting driver lineup, um, maybe an unusual one in some ways, but certainly one to watch. And, and I'll be excited to see how that that pans out in terms of on track and off track as well. Right, let's go back from Formula 2 to Formula 3 then. Another signing that was made was by the Campos team and they have signed a Euro Formula Open driver as well. 
in Christian Mansell. He had a strong season uh, this year and he is the first driver to be announced uh, by the team. He also uh, competed uh, in a couple of rounds this season as well. So already used to the car, Christian Mansell fighting at the front all year in Euro Formula Open, standing on the top step plenty of times uh, as well. Uh, George, what do you make of this one? Christian Mansell, uh, when he came in and did those couple of rounds, okay, maybe he didn't quite have the maybe the car behind him to go and fight for uh, points like Oli Gertha did, but now he's in that car that Oli Gertha was in. Do you think he can go and replicate what uh, his rival from uh, this season did? Definitely, I, th- I think um, I think he's in a you know he's in a good spot to push forwards. Um, the one-off appearance that he made at, at the same time that Gertha did, I think you could argue is probably a little bit unfair in terms of the results in the end. Yeah. Um, you know, Gertha in the Campos, which is actually weirdly very good at Spa, um, whilst you know he was in Charus. Um, but yeah, the he was definitely a challenger of Gertha um, in EFO in uh, 2022, taking three wins across the season. And yeah, the first of Campos uh, new signings, I, I think he's going to be definitely an interesting person to compare to Gertha. Of course, you can draw a lot of parallels between the two drivers um, after this year. And yeah, I think for 2023, he'll he's hopefully going to set the tone, you know, in that team. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some rumors about who will join him uh, there alongside, and it, it is looking like it should be a pretty interesting. Um, lineup for Campos so yeah he's going to be an interesting one to watch of course um, and yeah I think it should should give some interesting comparisons as well brilliant stuff right well we are going to end this section of the show now by moving to the Formula Regional European Championship by Alpine yes I'm going to say it all in one go uh, they have made their second driver announcement it comes from the same team in reigning teams and drivers champions Prima uh, they signed their second driver and that was Lorenzo Fluxa. he stays on for his third season we saw him start last season uh, with RHGP on the podium he got in the points a good few times uh, since then now he moved Moves over to uh, the Italian outfit where he'll be joining Andrea Kimi Antonelli along with another driver. Uh, George, I'm going to come back to you for this one. Uh, I know he's an F4 uh, UAE vice champion as well, the series you cover. Uh, what what do you make of this for Lorenzo Flukes? I mean, this is his third season, so this is the season where he wants to go and win. He's certainly in the team to, to go and do it. Uh, what do you think? Do you think he can go fight for the title? Yeah, I, th- I think this is this is make or break for him. Um, you know, you have drivers that come through Freca with you know only one or two two seasons under their belt, um, and you know with the Spaniard now in his third year, um, you would assume that he would deliver this time around, right? And I think Prima is the place that will give him the best shot of that. Of course, you know he's had some um, been at some strong teams before that, but Prima, the um, a-, a team known for being really dominant, especially in these. Uh, lower categories um, I think this gives him the best shot and yeah honestly I think he, he's a very difficult driver to read um, of course in Freca he started the year at Monza with a podium um, and then round out the season at Magello I'd say on the stronger side um, with a fifth place yeah, so it was it's it's quite difficult to predict honestly but I would I would definitely lay money on him for being one of the top improvers between the two years um he's definitely had an upwards traje- uh, trajectory so far and i i honestly can only see that continuing um but he does have quite um quite the drive alongside him of course in uh andrea kimi antonelli which i hope doesn't hurt him but i think will only push him forwards um you know with a driver that's got lots of um you know clearly loads of pace behind him um and i think is probably the one that has the most um eyes on him as well um I, I feel like that will only be able to help them develop and so you know with a third driver in there as well i feel like it's a kind of a match made in heaven right for a yeah. for a third year driver as well it should really help him um advance well that concludes uh the transfer section of the show the other news section of the show it does include uh some transfers but not in the series that we focus on uh there has been a couple stateside tyler which uh i want to come and talk to you about i think we'll start by talking about one driver who's leaving formula two to go to indycar marcus armstrong tell us a little bit more about this one yeah mr screaming mills himself will be moving <laughs> for, for next year and 
It's been a bit of a weird one for Marcus, uh-huh. a Ferrari driver, academy member, you know, a few years back and you know, it didn't quite work out for him in that sense. You know, he showed so much promise as a young Kiwi in the Toyota Racing Series and in the F3 Championship, you know, he finished as the runner-up in the 2019 uh, version of that. Uh, and in all three seasons of F2, he switched teams and it just yeah. hasn't been able to stick for him. And I think this year was his chance to maybe make that uh, that bit of progress that he missed in the first two years. He went back to uh, a team in high tech that he'd been with when he was younger and it just didn't work for, uh, work out for him again. And I think that at that point, he decided to to sort of cut his losses and move away from Europe and, and seek a, a different um, choice in motorsport. And IndyCar is where it will be. Yeah. He'll only be, um, he, he will only be uh, racing... Uh, for Chip Ganassi in, in, in 12 races of the 2023 calendar, uh, those being the ones on the street circuits and the permanent road circuits. But, uh, you know, people might forget that he still is a really, really talented driver and he'll be racing alongside the likes of Marcus Ericsson, obviously another you know European uh, driver who was a prodigy, uh, Scott Dixon and then Alex Pelot. So, you know, three drivers who are, are you know, cream of the crop in terms of uh, the American series. And I think that he'll really have the opportunity to illustrate just how talented he is. But um, it's a shame to lose someone like Marcus, but uh, we wish him all the best. Uh, we really do. It's going to make that series just even more and international than it already is, right? Uh, let's talk about the series that uh, is supporting that, the uh, formerly known Indy Lights Championship, because uh, they made a pretty exciting announcement as well, Tyler. Uh, Jamie Chadwick, the uh, undefeated W Series champion, uh, has announced she's going to be going to race over there as well. Uh, uh, I mean, how, how, how do you think she's going to get on? A, a pretty exciting announcement for her to be stepping over there with uh, Andretti Autosport. Yeah, she's had a bit of an odd career. Um, you know, she's been one of those drivers that I think people have been clamouring on to to try and have that opportunity in F3 to prove herself, obviously, as what is considered the leading female driver of, of the current era. But I think that having that opportunity to go over to America, clean start in a similar way yeah. to Marcus, perhaps. Um, you know, she has obviously dominated W Series in the last few years. So, you know, she has maybe got the form uh, and the confidence in herself, the belief, obviously, being a part of, of, the, of the Williams Academy as well. A development driver for them you know so she has the links the opportunity to to go to indy um uh, to the indy or what was the indy light series now the indy nxt series with andretti autosport um i think that it'll be again in the same way as armstrong an opportunity for her to prove herself you know she has a lot of doubters a lot of critics um but i, I think that uh, it'll also be a massive help for for women obviously in motorsport having that person in america as well to, to sort of um, help bridge the gap between mm-hmm. Europe and America, having a British driver there. Obviously, lots of female British drivers. So she adds to the long list of them, and hopefully she can uh, prove herself. Yeah, and sticking with uh, female drivers, George, uh, uh, we've had some uh, exciting news uh, in Europe as well. Uh, Aurelia Nobel's won the FIA Girls on Track, and uh, uh, she's now been signed uh, by Ferrari as well. And it seems she's going to have a, an exciting year next year. Tell us a little bit more about this story. Yeah, so the uh, the third edition of the FIA Girls on Track um, kind of competition. Um, of course, the one coming out on top, and um, she's actually earned herself a drive in Italian F4. That'll be with Iron Dames, um, who are definitely an, an, you know, a really interesting team to look at. Um, but yeah, she had a, had a relatively up and down year, I guess you could say, um, mostly racing in um, Brazilian F4 also made some one-off appearances in Danish and Spanish F4 as well. But um, yeah, I think the results she had kind of don't tell you the full story. Um, she definitely had an upwards traje- uh, trajectory again in that sense. Um, but yeah, she has some issues, I guess, with setup and car and it, problems that um, isn't totally within the driver's control, right? Which I think really hampered her um, ultimate finishing position in Brazilian F4. So with this new backing from Ferrari as well, which, you know, of course, is one of the best places to be um, for any driver, and especially a young female driver who, um, you know, sometimes where the funding or the promotion isn't quite there, this, you know, is really a great um, great way to push drivers like Aurelia up the um, Fear Series ladder. So, yeah, with that new backing and in arguably the, um, the best uh, Formula 4 Series out there, I think this will be a really... Uh, exciting gear for her and also really set the tone i guess for where this goes but also where the um girls on track kind of competition goes 
Mm. Uh, I mean, sadly for the, uh, I guess in the, the F4 scene, one of the main rivals to the Italian F4 Championship, ADA CF4, seems us not going ahead uh, next year. Uh, do you have a little bit more info for us on this one? I mean, it's, it's a real shame, isn't it, to see uh, a championship which has provided so many great champions over the year that, that maybe it's not going to go ahead. Yeah, I mean, the champions that it has produced are still doing amazing now. You've got Antonelli, of course, who dominated in Formula 4, Oli Behrman, Johnny Edgars, Hayward Pocher, and um, Yuri Vips as well. They're, you know, they're names that are so big still within the um, the racing world. And yeah, it's it's a really, it's definitely a, a sad downfall for that series. Um, of course, they are still entering, they are trying to keep the, the name going with... Um, drivers that they're promoting into uh french f4 however you know it's it's a really it's it's a weird downfall i guess for a series that has produced so many great drivers um yeah it's not what you want to see ever but um i guess they're um doing the best to try and keep something going yeah, well, we wish them all the best. One series that is going to go ahead, Frecker, uh, is going to go ahead. It's announced his calendar. We'll wrap up with this very quickly. Uh, one big change, Hockenheim in for Monaco and Santalock Racing as well. Join the grid. Uh, that's all for, for this week, gents. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Tyler, as ever, thanks for your insight uh, in the Formula 2 world. Uh, and George, thanks for your insight uh, as well uh, in the F3 Formula 4 world. It's been great to have you both on. Uh, do subscribe. Uh, to the channel do keep your eyes posted for the podcast uh, as well uh, and do come back and join us for all the roundup uh, in the transfer world at the same time next week right here on transfer weekly bye bye <laughs>